Hey guys, welcome back. So I want this video to serve as an introduction to matrix equations. And I know it may seem a little odd that I'm introducing matrix equations this far into the series, but the reason why I wanted to wait so long is because matrix equations are relatively easy. And the concepts that we've covered so far, like linear independence, span, and subspaces, those are more difficult topics. And I want you guys to be thinking about those topics as we learn the more easier concepts like matrix equations, because they are all related in one way or another. And over the next few videos, we will be able to define those relations and really understand what's going on uh, within our matrix equations. So really all that a matrix equation is, is an algebraic expression that involves matrices and vectors. And typically we see matrix equations of this form right here, where we have a matrix A multiplied by a vector X, and this is equal to another vector. So I could write this out explicitly. If we have an M by N matrix, then we could write it out like this, where it has M rows, so this would be A, M, 1, and all the way down to the nth column. So here's our matrix A, and it's being multiplied by a vector X. And we know that in order to multiply a matrix uh, by something else, then the number of columns must be equal to the number of rows of the vector. So for example, if we're multiplying by a vector X, then this vector X must contain N entries. If it had more or less than N, then we could not multiply these two matrices or uh, vectors together. So X must be an N by one vector. And this leaves us with a M by one vector on the right hand side. So this is equal to B, which must contain M components. So really when we state a matrix equation in this form right here, AX is equal to B, this is really what's going on right here. We have a matrix times a vector and it's equal to another vector. Okay, so now that we know what a matrix equation looks like, let's talk about how we actually go about solving these things. And before I start getting into matrices and stuff, let's consider a conventional algebra equation where we have just a number A times an unknown variable X, and this is equal to B. So basically what I'm trying to do here is draw a parallel between algebra and matrix algebra. So anyway, and if I wanted to solve this equation, literally all I would do is divide both sides by A, and I would get X is equal to B divided by A, and this would be my answer. Or similarly, I can multiply both sides by the inverse of A, or one over A. So I would get one over A times A, X is equal to one over A times B. And these two would cancel out, leaving X is equal to B over A, just like we got whenever we divided. And the reason why we can do this is because 1 over A times A is equal to 1. In fact, we can refer to 1 over A as the inverse of A. And this inverse is chosen specifically so that 1 over A times A is equal to 1. And we can also do this in reverse. I can say that A times 1 over A is also equal to 1, or the original number times its inverse is equal to 1. So we can think of an inverse of a number as a way to cancel something out whenever we multiply by it. Now we can apply the same logic to matrix equations. So in matrix land, there is no such thing as division by matrices. Therefore, I cannot just divide both sides by my matrix and get my answer. Instead, what I have to do is I have to multiply by an inverse, just like we did over here. So I can define an inverse of A as A inverse. I can denote it like this. And so if I multiply both sides of this equation by A inverse, what I get is this. And since we know that an inverse of a number times a number is one, well, it's the same idea with matrices. An inverse of a matrix times a matrix is equal to the one of matrix land, which we refer to as the identity matrix. So the equation becomes I, or the identity matrix, times X is equal to A inverse times B. So this identity matrix is like the one of matrix land. What it really is, is just ones along the main diagonal and zeros everywhere else. 
So if I were to multiply a matrix by I, if I have a random matrix and I multiply it by I, what I get is that same matrix. Just like if I were to take a number like A and multiply it by one, it would equal A. So that's why I call the identity matrix the one of matrix land. So this equation right here would actually simplify to X is equal to A inverse times B. And now once we compute this, this product right here, what we get is our answer, which is a vector X. So we use this idea of an inverse to solve matrix equations of this form, AX is equal to B. So let's consider a quick example. Let's say that we have a matrix that is defined like this, one, zero, one, two, one, negative one, three, three, four. And we're multiplying by an unknown vector X. And we know that this equals another vector B, which is one, two, three. So what we want to do is solve for this vector X, which is just a vector with three rows. So X1, X2, and X3. And the reason why I know it has three rows is because this matrix has three columns. So if I call this matrix A, and I call this vector B, then what we have is A times X is equal to B. So then again, we multiply both sides by the inverse of A in order to cancel out this left-hand side matrix. So these two cancel out into the identity matrix, which leaves us with X is equal to A inverse times B. Or in other words, we can say that X is equal to A inverse times one, two, three, whenever we plug in for B. And that will give us an expression for our vector X that we are solving for. So in these next couple of videos, I'm going to show you how we actually go about computing this inverse. Because once we can compute an inverse, then we can solve any matrix equation of this form. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next videos.